What's up, people, and welcome to a video that is sort of impromptu, but I had to make it because it's some of the craziest stuff I've seen in a while. Um, so, I am of the mind that we are all Americans. You know, it doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what your sexuality is. It doesn't matter what gender you are. It doesn't matter what nationality you are. If you live here, you are an American. We should care about what happens to America. We should care about the state of our country. And right now, the state of our country is chaos. And when you look at it from a perspective of some of these people that are out there right now in front of the White House protesting for Palestine and clapping like seals, listening to some of the most inflammatory rhetoric that you can imagine, it's, it's kind of insane. We have plenty of problems here. Plenty. And it, it blows my mind that you have so many people that it, it's not even, it doesn't make sense that these people hate this country so fucking much and will go out and tear shit up and scream and yell for a country they've never even been to. And it's kind of ironic that these are the same people that voted for Biden that are now standing outside the White House holding a, like a decapitated effigy of him and burning American flags and basically being pro-communist at this point. And it's, it's, it, I don't understand it. I do understand that a lot of this shit is coming out of our current, you know, college and university system from a lot of these professors that are creating these little revolutionaries, but I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with, you know, our, our country moving forward. And I had to go back and record this from a uh, three letter news agency that's currently streaming the protests. We'll just call it the communist news network. You can infer what news network I was watching from the clip off of that. Um, and yeah, it, it's, it was just so wild hearing this girl talk, because she's got to be at least in her 20s. And it's the type of rhetoric that if it were coming from somebody on the right, or anything to the right of left at this point, I mean, shit, even if you're a centrist, you're a fucking right winger now, that if somebody had been saying something even remotely close to the shit that this girl is spouting out, they would get fucking black banned. They would get chunked in a van and you would never see them again. Or they would get chunked in a van and then they would get publicized to death by the mainstream media as some sort of uh, domestic terrorist. But this girl can just sit there and say whatever she wants and everybody just sits there and goes, oh, yeah, woohoo. You know, because it's, it's the current thing. And outside of a couple, you know, hardcore NAFO people, this is the same thing that happened with Ukraine, right? For the longest time, it was Ukraine, 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 right when Russia invaded, right? And then as soon as the Israel-Palestine thing happened, then it was oh, Palestine, 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 Palestine. Well, what about Ukraine? Oh, don't, nope, nope, Palestine, Palestine, only Palestine, everything. And it, it, it's like a switch goes off in these people's brains that tells them, okay, I need to focus on this thing now. and Never mind everything else, right? So I had to I had to redo this intro because for some reason my recording st stuff was not recording me talk. So I'm probably going to cut in where I actually realized that I was muted the last time I recorded this. That way it saves me a little bit of trouble of having to listen to this girl screech for about five minutes. And I do warn you, there is a volume warning on this because she is literally screeching. And I, I don't know how I was able to sit through it, but it, it's, it's bad. It's really bad. It's so bad. It made me do a double take and go back and record it before this evidence is gone. It, it's not good. Like, it's not the type of rhetoric that you want to hear coming out of this country at any given time. And yeah, it. I don't know what we're going to do. So be prepared for the cut and me pretending that uh, 
this is part of the first time that I recorded this. It's my pleasure to welcome next a fellow New Yorker and a longtime organizer. Please help me welcome Eddie from Palo Alto. There we go. Okay. I just realized I was muted. Thank God I caught this ahead of time. But I can't hear who she is. Uh, all I can hear is that she's some activist from New York. But I can't hear a name, and I doubt they would say her real name anyway. Uh, because this type of shit gets you put on a list, what she's about to say. I, I, yeah, let's keep going. Assalamu alaikum, comrade. Assalamu alaikum, comrades. I come to you on behalf of the Palestinian Assembly for Liberation and Paul Alda, New York. We stand here today in the wake of one of the most gruesome massacres Gaza has seen till date. Over 210 Palestinians assassinated at Nusrat refugee camp with a shame with reports suggesting that American troops were amongst the soldiers who fired at multiple times displaced refugees right there she brings up that there's a report of American troops firing at Palestinian refugees I have not heard of that happening yet but already that's that's already incitement that's anti-america rhetoric that there's the reason for saying that there's no concrete evidence of this happening the reason for saying it is to rile people up even more right these troops came in by way of a false pier in central Gaza and dummy humanitarian aid trucks Shame! In the words of the founder and director of the Power Law Commission on War Crimes, Justice, Reparations, and Return, Lamise Deek, they may have the power right now, but we are working to ensure that this is the beginning of the end of the era of Zionist fascist denomination! Okay. If that doesn't scream terroristic threats to you, I don't know what will. I, this is the type of shit that if I were to get on YouTube right now, and if I start saying that type of rhetoric, I'm going to get a knock on the door from the fucking, from Homeland Security going, what are you doing, bro? That's crazy talk. <laughs> but, you know, everybody's going, well, okay, yeah. Palestinian resistance. You mean Hamas. Just say Hamas at this point. Just say it. Who have been steadfast on the front lines of the struggle for decolonization and anti-imperialism. We will be the red line! That's, that's what that means. We support Hamas. <laughs> We will amplify the call of the freedom fighters, the martyrs, the prisoners, and every single Palestinian. Not only will we continue protesting in the streets and boycotting and calling for divestment and sanctions, including that of Citibank and Chevron and any and every institution that profits off of the blood of the people in Gaza and Palestine. We will escalate the calls to action by sending delegations to Palestine to record crimes against Palestinians! Anytime you say we will escalate, that is a threat. And Obviously, with the very pretty wording, the very 
semi Marxist wording that she's using here. It will not semi, it is fucking Marxist rhetoric type wording. Uh it it makes it sound uh glamorous, right? Instead of what she really wants to say. It's it's so it's more palatable to people. We will provide material support to Palestinians in the material West Bank support. against settler violence! We will arm them with helmets, vests, and other means of self-defense. What do you think she means by that? Who is she arming? Is she arming the civilians that are fleeing? Who exactly is she supporting here? Who is she arming? That's the first question that popped in my head. Who exactly are they arming? Oh, the resistance. We're arming the resistance. So, you're supporting Hamas. Right? Because at this point... To all these fucking lefties, Hamas is the resistance. They're, they are pro-Hamas. That's, that's it. Plain and simple. <laughs> Corporate America needs to pay a financial and economic price for benefiting off of the genocide and making it possible. Everything is about Palestinian revol revolution. You know, they're in front of the White House right now. They're literally in front of the White House. Again, this is the type of shit that if you were a conservative or somebody on the right, if you were saying anything even remotely close to what this woman is saying, you would get picked up and black fanned. Just straight up. You, they would never hear from you. You People wouldn't know where you went. You'd just be gone. <laughs> They'd throw you in jail, say you're guilty, and you'd never hear from them again. It, it, it's, it's true. But she gets to stand there and, you know, basically say stuff that is borderline terroristic threats. And, yeah, everything's fine, right? <laughs> Spread disruptions to the systems of oppression. That is a threat. Plain and simple. Like, th there's no other way to interpret that. That's a threat. And assuming that she is strictly speaking about Israel and not anywhere here, that it would be considered a terroristic threat. Of liberation led by the Palestinian resistance and no one else. We will no, secure no, the right no, to return no. safety and security for all Palestinians. Oh, Zionist, so let us continue like. to no, urge no, our no, national no. and international communities to stand with Palestine, to demand... Also, this woman is wearing a mask and gloves outside. Outside! An end to the occupation and to work towards liberation, self-determination for the Palestinian people as they have been for the last 100 plus years.
So that's that's the current generation right there, in a nutshell. And we are we're so boned as a country. <laughs> I can't even. Jesus Christ. Um. Uh, yeah. I. If you were on the right saying that type of shit, you'd get locked up. And that is probably the most extreme example of rhetoric that I've heard yet outside of, you know, morons on, on X or Twitter or whatever you want to call it, or Reddit. They're not trying to hide it anymore, right? They don't care. They think they're revolutionaries, you know, as they sit at Starbucks, or sorry, they're boycotting Starbucks as their uh, non-GMO vegan local coffee shop, wherever it is they got around there. They think they're revolutionaries. And this is a type of rhetoric that shouldn't be acceptable. But for some reason it is. And I'm just saying, if we keep going in this direction, we are fucked. Period. Is If we don't get somebody in the White House that actually gives a shit about our country, we are fucked. If we don't do something to shut down this spread of communist and Marxist rhetoric that is rapidly growing, we are fucked. There's no other way to put it. And it's honestly sad that we have gotten to this point. And all these people that voted for Biden thinking that things were going to get better, this is where we're at. They hate him. They hate Biden. These are all the same people that voted for Biden that are standing out there, you know, holding his little effigy and burning American flags and shit. We're cooked. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about this. Something has to change in November. Something. I don't know what. I don't know if that means Trump has to get into office one way or the other. Because if we keep going in this direction, it is genuinely scary. So, thanks for watching, everybody. Until next time. Yeah, don't say anything like what that lady was saying.